This is Money Track with Pam Kruger and Jack Gallagher. Bringing you real stories and real experts to show you what works and what doesn't work when it comes to investing your money. This is Money Track. Hi, everybody. I'm Pam Kruger. Welcome to Money Track. And I'm Jack Gallagher. We're all together here. This is Pam's dog, Chloe, hanging about with us. She comes and goes as she pleases. And of course, we have our unbelievable crew doing a great job as usual. Every week we come together just like this to learn something about money, sort of our own little money track club. We should start a money track club. We'll get t-shirts with everybody's name on them and a secret handshake. <laughs> okay. Now we focus on Money Track on the approach to investing versus just the products. And what I mean by that is I'm talking about the investing process. And we do this by sharing stories from real people so that you can learn from their successes or from their mistakes. Right. And Pam is really the investing expert on the show. She's been both a stockbroker and a financial reporter. So this is Pam's beat. Pam is sort of the president of the Money Track Club. How about you? Okay. I'm more of a vice president of communication. Chloe handles entertainment and catering. <laughs> I'd say you're more of a senior VP. That was sort of an age thing. <laughs> wow. Today's show is about investing with other people in a group who share the same money-making goals that you have. As you'll soon find out, there's a right way to invest with other people and a wrong way. You know, the investment club way where everybody's involved in decision making. Versus the country club way, which tends to be more follow the leader. Now, there are thousands of successful investment clubs that are all over the country and some have been around for decades. Members join because they want to become better investors and the learning process is frankly more fun with other people. Kind of like a study group back in college. Kind of without the all-nighters. Thank you. All right, now when you join an investment club, you're expected to contribute research, um, of course money, same as everybody else. Then the club as a whole group decides where to invest that money. And as you're about to see for yourself, there can be real safety in numbers investing as a group. On the other hand, we're gonna show you the flip side and you'll see what happens when the group mentality turns into the herd mentality. So let's get started right now with Matt Markovich, who's in New York. Ah, the American dream. Immigrants seeking a better life in America. And a father in Honduras shares that dream, especially for his twin 15-year-old boys. Jose and Tomas Avila. In their native Spanish, he teaches them a strong work ethic and that their hard-earned money should be spent wisely. Oh yeah, and one more thing, they're moving. Fast forward, the twins are in America, grown up with families working full time. They're also self-taught investors. And where is their money? We like to invest here in the New York Stock Exchange. And we also like to invest here on the NASDAQ. And I'm bullish and you're bearish. No, I'm bullish and you're bearish. No, you're bearish, I'm bullish. No, I'm bullish and you're oh, bearish. Oh, uh, did I mention they're identical twins? But there are differences in the way we, we approach things. He's an engineer. He likes four. <laughs> I like financial. <laughs> there you go, that's right. <laughs> but while both were busy achieving the American dream, Jose noticed something evil lurking around his fellow Honduran immigrants. Their idea of investing was nothing but a Ponzi scheme, similar to what con man Bernie Madoff was doing. So basically, Bernie Madoff was taking money from one person and handing it to another, a Ponzi scheme. How did you convince him to stop doing that? I actually introduced the concept of education. That's really what investment clubs are all about. Good afternoon. Investment clubs, a group of people who meet on a regular basis for the purpose of investing money. In the year 2000, Jose created the New Horizons Investment Club, its members the least likely to have money, fellow Honduran immigrants from one of the poorest congressional districts in the U.S., the South Bronx of New York. Being poor is no excuse to participate in the market, so therefore it's not the size of the investment, it's developing the discipline of participating in the market. Jose tells me every month, members must invest at least $25 in a club account. Members research companies, 
mutual funds, continuing to invest, report back, and then the group decides when, where, and how much to invest, if at all. Now, if you think this is a rags to riches story, think again. How did your first investment do? Not really well, actually. It was a financial company that went bankrupt. But yet you guys continue to invest, why? Yes, it did. It was a great learning experience, and the whole idea is to learn how to invest uh, for the long term. Ah, the long term. Meanwhile, Thomas being the identical twin. No, I'm full. No, you're buried. No, you're buried. No, you're buried. No, no, well, you get the idea. He wanted to do the same. Welcome. So in 2008, he started a club for Latinos where he lives in Providence, Rhode Island. I want to thank every, every one of you for being believers in the idea of the club. It's the Forturo Brillante Investment Club. That's Spanish for brilliant future. Being futuristic, it gives us the understanding of that it's a long term. Hey, now the other twin is talking long term. So we're going to proceed to, uh, to make our in investment. This club also meets once a month. Tomas tells me everyone must also pony up a minimum $25 monthly investment or they'll be cashed out of the club after three months of non-payment. What gets me about your club and your brother's club is that these are people who are least likely to put in 25 bucks, but you convinced them to do it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and, and that is the interesting thing. These are people who also have never been taught about investing. So they always see an investment as something outside of their community and something that they, they don't have access to it. But through their clubs, I learned both brothers are providing that access, kickstarting investing to people who may not have invested at all. But the market has taken a beating of historical proportions. First time investors sometimes panic. When they see stocks tumbling on the NASDAQ, what do you tell them to keep them involved, keep them investing? Again, we remind them of, of the objective to invest for the long term. The only way to recover from the market downturns is to be patient and wait for the market to recover. Wait, that phrase again to invest for the long term. I heard it over and over. For the long run, it's in the long term. For the long term. In, in the long term. And to prove their long haulers, they showed me their numbers. I see your balance sheet shows $180,000. That's pretty good after nine years, but I would bet it was higher. Absolutely, absolutely. At one point, it was over $250,000. But we are very confident that eventually it's going to surpass the $250,000 that it, where it was, and that's how confident we are that the market will pick up again. Looking at your statements, you like Ford. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Almost exclusively. He's an engineer. I like Ford. I like financial. <laughs> but if you look at the numbers, Ford is taking a beating this year. Yes, indeed. Prices. If you're long-term investors, it just makes you stronger. Their members find that confidence contagious. If we are still doing what we're doing, I think we're gonna be successful. Okay, you are. And now Jose's club is seeing multi-generational investing. We got all my kids involved, including my wife also, and my grandson. Yes, even three-year-old Elijah is a member, handing over his money he gets from his granddad. <laughs> two clubs, two identical twins with one common goal. The fact that $25 translates to 83 cents a day in a month. For less than a dollar, you have an opportunity to save for your future, save for your children's future, and create capital. It's a message that's clear in any language. They say they're in it for the long haul. Muy bueno. Fantastic. Now, this is nothing short of amazing and pretty ironic that a small group from Central America comes to this country and they learn more about the stock market and our capital markets than I have to tell you I ever learned in high school or even in college for that matter. It is so true. Now, I want to hear more about that. Let's get Jose and Tomas back with us right now. Hi, Jose. Hi, Hi Prime Minister. Jack. Thank you for letting us be in the show. We love to talk about investing. We love this story, and we think you are inspiring people to mm -hmm. become more educated about how to invest wisely. I'm pretty impressed that your whole motivation was to avoid falling for some scam like the Ponzi designed by disgraced financier Bernie Madoff, right? When I arrived in New York City and I st started getting involved with my countrymen, what I found was that they were actually just basically uh, saving through 
a scheme that is what is referred to as a pyramid nowadays, uh, basically uh, collecting money and passing it on from person to person. And what I tried to do when, with the idea of New Horizon Investment Club was to show them how to create capital and make it grow. And unlike the country club crowd that kind of wound up being victimized in that now famous scandal, members of your clubs shared all the decision-making power. So there was no, you know, secret squirrel stuff going on, right, Tomas? Definitely. I feel very strong uh, in participating and actually creating uh, capital through investment. And part of the reason that I uh, f felt very strongly is because I saw what my brother was doing with uh, his club and definitely it was my motivation to actually start Futuro Briante Investment Club. Uh, great name. You know this is great because the more educated you become and I'm talking about just understanding the basics exactly. of investing the less you tend to react to bad news. Absolutely. Now you guys both seem pretty comfortable so I take it that you are fairly confident about investing even when the stock market's really volatile. Absolutely. We are very confident in the market. We are sure that the market will pick up again and we will continue to stick around and continue to invest in the stock market. Jose, Tomas, thank you so much for sharing your remarkable story with all of us. We wish you the very best with the club and all your investments. Clearly, these folks are investors and not speculators. And if you're thinking about starting or joining an investment club and want to know the very first steps to take, take that very first step to our website and click on the Money Minutes tab. Here comes Chloe with that information. What an Dean unbelievable Chloe's dog. Chloe's part of the club. Right now, let's test your knowledge about investing. That means we have a quiz question coming. Yes, we do. Now, we know that on paper, you can have a gain or a loss in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. But if you're part of an investment club and that club has real profits, question is, can you cash in and take those profits anytime? That is an ex. Do you come up with those questions? That is an excellent I'm question. I'm going to have to club. think about that. <laughs> I suggest you folks do the same thing. And in the meantime, we're going to zero in on what to do and what not to do if you become part of an investment club. That is our Investing 101 for this week, and Dennis Genord of Better Investing is here as guest professor. Hi, Dennis. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Now, your organization, the National Association of Investment Clubs, help novice investors uh, get these clubs up and running all over the country, and then you help them operate smoothly. There are definite do's and don'ts when it comes to running an investment club. Is that right? Pam and Jack, uh, there's, there's three things that we really want to uh, remember here with regard to an investment club. Each individual member is responsible for their actions. They need to take an active role in the investment club. Two, there needs to be a checks and balance system set up in the club where there's internal audits going on uh, on an annual basis. And number three, Pam and Jack, the club should be set up as a partnership or a limited liability company. Funds should be invested directly with a brokerage firm or a bank, not with one individual of the investment club. This is great. Those internal controls are key. Dennis, now I thought that this was great. Jose prefers to use an investment advisor for his club, and they go through a major brokerage house, and that way the club can tap into all those expensive resources, you know, the access to the analyst research, et cetera. And it's wonderful that they're able to uh, benefit from such resources. It's a practice that uh, uh, a number of our investment clubs will do as well, where they'll use the, their broker or the investment uh, uh, research and analyst reports that are provided uh, through those uh, through the brokerages as a second opinion. I think I get what's going on here. Okay, Jose's club pays full commission rates to get all that information, but he shares that with Tomas's club, which goes through a discount broker. So they're kind of getting a two for kind one thing, which is very smart. It's brilliant. More impressed with these Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Now, by the way, in case you wonder, investment clubs performance-wise, do overall a little bit better than the stock market index. And I'm, I'm taking the Standard & Poor's 500, for example, and that's pretty good. But Dennis, I imagine that the newer clubs are probably finding it a little bit harder to stick together when the stock market is so volatile. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, without a doubt. It's uh, in fact, uh, we see that mm -hmm. with uh, in this environment, uh, some of our newer clubs that came on board just before uh, or that occur that come on board before these types of events uh, will jump ship. They, they haven't had the experience uh, or the time to, uh, to get up to speed uh, from an education and experience standpoint uh, to know to weather these uh, these types of situations out. Dennis, this is great. Really valuable information. You know what? I'm surprised you didn't ask if some of these clubs accept dogs. Oh, come on. Chloe has a job here. Dogs are allowed at club meetings, and, and we would love for Chloe to make a special visit uh, to one of our clubs in the near future. All right, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Whatever. Told you. Hey, remember the quiz question? Yes, I do, and I'm going to remind people right now. How can individual members cash in when the club has real profits? Right. So think of an investment club exactly the same as you would a mutual fund. People are pooling their money, mm -hmm. and you can request. It doesn't have to be a profit. It could be a distribution. You just want to get some money out. You can make a request anytime you want to. You're never stuck. You can cash out. Of course, though, it always pays to hang on to your gains a little bit longer because you get tax breaks, and you usually just do better investing over longer time frames than shorter ones. But the bottom line is you can get your money out whenever you want to make that request. Well, you have just heard how important it is for an investment club to put up some good firewalls to protect members from fraud. And to demand that each club member participates in everything, including audits, because this, you know, this clubby environment can easily become the perfect setup for a scam. Right now we're going to introduce you to another group of immigrants who also came here from a country located in the Caribbean, and they too invested together in the United States. But their story has a very different ending. For Nerlene Manassi, nothing's more important than family, faith, and community. Nerlene and her family left Haiti when she was just eight years old to come to America in search of a better life. They settled into the tight-knit Haitian community of Lake Worth, Florida. For 10 years, Nerlene saved every penny she could until she had a $25,000 down payment for a house big enough for her husband and their six children. But Nerlene's American dream turned into a nightmare the day she overheard her cousin talking about how much money he made with a new investment. My cousin invested $10,000. Within three months, he ended up with $40,000. All through a company called Creative Capital Consortium, founded by a fellow Haitian, George Theodore. Nerlene was sure this would be a home run. She went to one of Theodore's so-called investment club meetings to see for herself. Feeling very confident, she invested her entire $25,000 nest egg. Mr. Theodore is the mastermind behind all the investment clubs. The money was taken from different clubs all over the region of Florida and funneled right back to CCC. Rumors were flying through the Haitian community that Theodule's nearly 100 investment clubs were all making big money. He had the cars, the big house, and he seemed to have a never-ending supply of cash. Theodule was also a self-proclaimed pastor. The Haitian community in general tends to be quite religious, and George Theodule sold himself as a quote-unquote man of God. If somebody come to you and tell you that he's a pastor, you won't think there's any red flags. The only thing you're going to see is green lights to go. As a pastor, Theodule knew the one place he could reach people was in the house of God. He visited many local churches where he preached the glory of his investment strategy. He claimed that he was going to make 10,000 Haitian millionaires, that we can go back to our third world country and be able to help our community there. More than a 1,000 investors, mostly Haitian Americans, gave at least part of their life savings. Some only had $1,000, others had $50,000 or more. Theodule only took cash, but he made the promise that their money would double in just 90 days. One of the red flags of a fraud would be if they ask you to pay cash. Never give cash for any investment opportunity. Like most Ponzi schemes, at first, Nerlene did see double-digit gains on paper. She was pleased, but also a little skeptical. How was her money growing so fast in such a slow economy? So she made a phone call to find out. Mr. Theodore replied to me saying that he could not tell me where he was putting this money because there's a lot of copycats out there that would steal his strategy. 
It seemed this guy was so good that even people in his inner circle didn't suspect anything. Reggie Rosemay lived down the street from Theodule and often hung out at his house. Reggie was also under Theodule's spell. He invested 35000 his family's entire savings. George promised that he would give us our initial investment back if anything didn't double, if we wanted to just went out of the investment club. George often took a personal approach with investors and would stop at nothing to gain their trust. Well, behind me is uh, George's house, and this is where he would have one of his meetings going down as far as bringing investors to sign in with him to give him money. And it was probably like uh, 20, you know, 20 to 35 people a day in and out of his house. He told all the investors that we were able to get our money back. Six months later, Merlene Manassi decided to take all her money out of Creative Capital. But when she arrived at the headquarters, the doors were locked and the office vacant. I was in a state of shock. And desperate for answers, Merlene took matters into her own hands. She contacted a local news station. That's when she discovered she wasn't alone. George Theodule is accused of stealing $23.4 million from more than 1,000 of his fellow Haitian Americans. For Reggie Rosemay, it's not just about the money, it's personal. It wasn't just a business thing with me and George, it was like a friendship that I had with him, and it's very devastating. Both Nerlene and Reggie are hoping to get at least some of their money back. We came from a third world country not believing that something like this could happen, not in America, a place of justice. Now, authorities are still working on finding the missing money, but so far, Pam, as of today, guess how much they've recovered? How much? Out of all of that money, just $9,000. Wow, yeah. God, it's so tragic. Well, our producer sat down with Florida State Securities Regulator Mark Mathiason because we want to understand how we can spot this kind of scam before we get taken. Affinity fraud is a method used by swindlers to steal your money. You become their friend or you're probably already their friend because you're part of their group. If somebody says to you, this is a good deal, you need to investigate, you need to verify, you need to do your homework. You, nobody makes investments or you should not ever make an investment just because somebody says it's good. Well, thank you, Mark. This is really critical information. Thanks for helping us get it across. There's so many scams now. Now, we have one more thing to do today. We want to summarize three things we've learned. So here comes the little checklist. And number one, joining or starting an investment club is one of the best ways to educate yourself about investing. And you know what? That's a skill you're going to build on throughout your entire life. We also learned how to say, we're in it for the long run in Spanish. You ready? Precisely. Estamos, Estamos comprometidos a largo, largo plazo. plazo. You're very good at that. OK, <laughs> but we also you. know that investment clubs have strict rules and should be established as legal entities. That's really important because you don't want anybody asking questions or being confused in the middle of the club. Exactly. And the last and final point today, if you are invited to join the Secret Squirrel Investing Club, where nobody knows where the money's really going, it's probably not a good way to invest. Safety in numbers only works when everybody's involved in every key decision. You just saw how easy it was for this one man to ruin so many from his own community. Much more from today's show is available right now, this very minute, on our website, and that's moneytrack.org. This meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Hey, wait a minute. I'm sorry, Pam. You're the president. You should do that. You need a gavel. <laughs> I'm going to get one. You should. Let's have a meeting about that. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. So long. Sorry, I jumped right in there. I think we should meet I on really this immediately. Want to be I think we this is a, not a joint decision. <laughs> <laughs> Estamos comprometidos. Comprometidos. Promo, like carry promo. I say we go with Apple. Microsoft. Apple. Microsoft. Apple has more innovative stuff. Espanadas compritaditos los plazo. What? <laughs> Wait, this is a deal breaker. Well, there's three I of mean, us. Let's go to the third person. Breaker. They decide. She said Apple. She said Apple. She said she Apple right not. here. She said Apple. Bernie Mayoff was basically rotting Peter to pay 
<laughs> and, uh, my mouth is frozen too. I know, I feel for you. Try, <laughs> try. <laughs> The Money Track series is available on home video. Individual DVDs are $24.95 each plus shipping and handling. Please designate which volume when ordering. The entire DVD set is $54.95 plus shipping and handling. The companion book, The Money Track Method, The Real Person's Guide to Successful Investing, is available for $24.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, please visit the website at www.moneytrack.org or call 1-800-937-5387. Money Track is made possible by the Investor Protection Trust. The Investor Protection Trust is a nonprofit organization devoted to investor education. Over half of all Americans are now invested in the securities markets, making investor education and protection vitally important. Since 1993, the Investor Protection Trust has worked with states across the country to provide the independent, objective investor education needed by all Americans to make informed investment decisions.